good afternoon. This afternoon we're going to see that there is evidence for God everywhere. That there is evidence for God all around us and all we have to do is look for it. You see, God has left his fingerprints everywhere on the world that we live in. And all we have to do to is look for them and all we have to do is find them. And it's not even very difficult to find God's fingerprints. It's not very difficult to find evidence for God. It is all around us in the world we live in. So this afternoon we are looking for evidence that God exists. And um, I've got a question. Now we start with the younger. Do we know who this is? You know who that is, Joshua? It's a famous detective. Listen to Uncle Andrew. <laughs> right. All right, yeah. Okay, I, I thought you might know who that is. So that's Sherlock Holmes. He's a really, really famous detective. And we're going to be, a bit like Sherlock Holmes, we're going to be looking for evidence. And we're going to do this by ask, observing and asking a question. We're going to look at um, some, th we're going to look at nature, we're going to look at the creation, and we're going to ask a simple question. Here's the design. Where's the designer? But before this, I, do, I just want to put in a, a, a contrast. So I am a mechanical design engineer. That is my job. My job is all about design. Me and my team, I lead a team of engineers. Every day of, of, of our working week, we are focused on design. We are very familiar with design. And when we're designing something, the one thing that we try more than anything to eliminate is chance. As design engineers, we don't want chance. We want things to do exactly what we've asked them to do. We don't like chance. We try to eliminate chance. And, and, and the design process goes something like this. Um, our company says we want this new machine or new mechanism. And we, we have a think about what they want. And we come up with some ideas of how it might work. And, and we test and we make those ideas. And we test them. And uh, whichever one works the best, we use. It goes something like that. And, and through that whole process, through that whole process, we try to eliminate chance. We want it to do exactly as we want it to work exactly as we designed it to do. Now this is a Spartan 360 AB. Now you may not have no clue what one of those is, but it is a machine that I created. The customer came to us and they said, I want something to mix sand. Doesn't matter why you want to mix sand, but you need to do it in foundries. Anyway, and they wanted to do it at 60 tons an hour. They wanted powered movement. They wanted remote control. They wanted it to move up and down by three meters. They wanted it in red, and they wanted the jib to make six meters long. And that machine does exactly what the customer wants. It does specifically what the customer asks for. Now, is it design or is it chance? If it does exactly what the customer wants, is it design or chance? Well, I know it's design because I personally designed it. I designed that machine, and that's a snapshot from my computer when I was designing. So I know that that machine that does exactly what the customer wants came about because it was intended, because it was designed by me to do exactly what the customer wants. So that's if that's the case with sand mixers or bridges or cars or any other object like that. Why would it be any different when we look at the natural world? When we look around at the natural world, when we see plants and animals and birds and we see them functioning in a fantastically intricate way when we see things that work perfectly together when we see things that do a very specific job when we look at that why would it be anything other than design we used to design every day in our lives things are designed to work they are so when we see it in nature why do people look at it and see chance because that's not what I see when I look at nature, I see God, the great designer. I do not see chance. I see things working intricately together. Let me give you an example. This is a hummingbird. Now, I'm no zoologist. As I've already said, I'm a mechanical design engineer. But I don't need to be a zoologist to see the design in that picture. You've got the bird that can hover, its wings beat faster than most other birds, so it can hover in an absolute precise position. 
So it can get under that, that flower and then its beak, it's really long and thin, it's perfectly shaped, it's perfectly, it's the right length to get into that flower. And I look at that and I see that all working together wonderfully and I see design. I see the hands of a great designer who came up with that design, who made that flower and that bird work perfectly together. When I look at that, I don't see chance. Now some say, some say that, well, these things happened over time by natural selection, that certain animals and birds um, developed features over time. Well, if this bird started off with a short beak, what did it eat when its beak was still short? Right? Its beak needs to be a certain length to get into that flower. Natural selection suggests that it features enhance over time. Well, what did it eat for the thousands of years it was growing a longer beak to go into that flower? Well, I don't know. I look at that and I see design. I do not see chance. Now, Joshua, do you think you could come up here and help me? Marvellous. Right. It's not arduous, I promise you. All right, it's not difficult. So, yeah, <laughs> arduous maybe arduous, to difficult. Right, I'm going to show you another picture. Let's see. Let's come about here. Right. So it's another picture. Tell me what you see. Just describe what you see. It's not difficult. A flower. Yeah. Mm. But it's very similar to the last picture I showed you. A bird. A bird. Right. And its wings are hovering. And its wings. This is a really fantastic picture that stops its wings using slow motion technology but that wing's beating thousands of times a minute right and its beak fits perfectly into the flower absolutely perfectly in now when you look at that tell me what you think do you think that happened by chance or do you think that was designed by somebody to work perfectly together like that you're unsure that's all right you can be unsure i think it happened by design right I don't think that was chance at all. Go on, you, you go and you take a seat. I think you'll see a bit there. Right, I, I, I look at that and I see design. I don't see chance. So here's our challenge. Here's the design. Where's the designer? When you see something working perfectly together, when you see something working so intricately, where's the designer? There's the design. It works perfectly. I don't see chance in that at all. Another example, that's a curlew. Right, you're looking at me. Right, that's a bird called a curlew, Joshua. Right, and that has a really long beak, but it has an entirely different kind of long beak. It doesn't eat nectar from a flower, it eats little worms and grubs that are buried deep into the sand. Right, deep into the sand, and so what it does is it pushes its beak right into the sand to get the little worms and the grubs, and the tip of its beak is flexible and sensitive so it can move and bend and get under rocks and under tufts of grass and all sorts of things to find the food that it wants its feet are particular its toes on its feet are particularly long right so it doesn't sink into the mud and the sand where it is um where it is walking it may have a long beak, but it can't flap its wings very fast like the hummingbird. So it could never feed off a, f a flower like the hummingbird, but that's not what it was designed to do. It was designed to eat worms and grubs in an estuary. And, I, and I've seen this bird in a place called Welney Wash near where I used to live down uh, near Peterborough. And, and I looked at these birds feeding and I saw them in certain and I never once thought, oh, isn't chance a wonderful thing? I never once thought, oh, that's a coincidence, so that just seems to work together. When I saw it, I saw design. I saw something that was designed to do perfectly what it was. You see, there's another uh, picture of the curly. You can see its head is right inserted into the, into the sand, and its beak is going down to get the grubs. And so, here's the design. Where's the designer? That's the challenge for you and I. When you see things working perfectly together, question is where is the designer here's another one for you now this uh, these pictures I took in South Af not South Africa Kenya Kenya it's the weaver bird and you can see here these are the nests made by the weeder bird and the nests in themselves are a fantastic piece of design what happens is this weaver bird over here can you see that long piece of green um, vegetation or leaf 
it picks those off a plant and it flies up into the tree and using its beak and its feet it starts to weave them together it's a bit like knitting I suppose um, but it's weaving them together and you can see here it weaves them all together into these um, nests and it weaves them around the branches and it leaves a hole at the bottom and then the bird can get up inside that nest and it can lay its eggs and rear its young on there and the bird creates them and, and brings them uh, uh, creates those and the bird is perfectly designed to do that that bird can work upside down it can hold itself it can weave the weave the um, leaves into that nest so when we look at that and you see another picture there you can see the bird inside the nest you can see the way that the whole nest is woven together that looks to me like it was designed that way certainly the bird designed the nest that way but the bird looks like it to me anyway looks like it was designed to work like that so here again it is the challenge here's the design where's the designer you see these animals working perfectly together the way that they created the, 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 the bird is is perfectly designed to do that so where's the designer this is me flying a golden eagle by the name of um, Samson and it was an absolute privilege to do that when you are up close and personal to a golden eagle like that you really get a, a sense of the power and the uh, and just the sheer power and elegance of, of it and um, we're down in, in uh, Cornwall um, we're on the cliff tops you can just see the sea behind me and the winds blowing in over the cliffs uh, and, uh, and the eagle, it just reached its wings out and it just slightly twisted its wings and the breeze just lifted it up and it just effortly, li effortlessly if lifted up on the breeze and soared away. And like I said, it was a true privilege to, to see that and, and, and to feel the strength of the talent on your hand good job you had a thick leather leather glove on or you'd have really known about it and and to see that and to and to see its beak that was designed perfectly to eat the food that it was eating and to see how it could just see so far and you know what i looked at that beautiful bird and i saw the elegance and the ease at which it just lifted on the wing on the wind and soared away and i never once thought isn't chance a wonderful thing I never once thought, oh, that looks like a bit of a coincidence. I saw that and I saw the hands of a designer. I saw the, uh, the, the design coming together. I saw something working like it was meant to. And here's, here's a close-up of, of the same eagle. You can see there the eye and the beak perfectly designed to function together to get, so that eagle could do what it needs to do. And so again here's our challenge here's the design where's the designer when we see these things working together perfectly like they do you've got to think well where did that come from where did that perfect working together come from is it chance or did somebody design it like that and I put to you that God designed it like that God designed it to work perfectly together this is a peregrine falcon it is no understatement to say it is a perfectly designed hunting machine this bird represents the absolute elegance in hunting and again um, I don't spend all my time playing with uh, birds of prey but again I was privileged to handle one of these again, again down in Devon you can see me there uh, with the bird on my glove that peregrine falcon and we were out hunting with these birds we were deliberately going hunting and and uh fortunately for us less fortunate for the pheasant we were going through this field and this pheasant came up and the, and the and the bird was on my glove and i moved my hand like that and threw the bird into the air and what it does is it, it hunts in a very specific way it climbs up and it climbs up so the pheasant's going away and it's almost like it's not seen the pheasant because it's not going after the pheasant it climbs up and it climbs up and climbs up until it's really high up 
and it's but it's knows the pheasants there it's seen it and then it comes over the top and it starts to come down and you can see it here that isn't my picture by the way that's uh, uh google's a wonderful thing but you can see that there it folds its wings behind it tucks them in and it's almost like bullet shaped and it comes flying down at an incredible speed in fact in a dive the peregrine falcon can go over 200 miles an hour in a dive it's an incredible incredible design and it comes flying in and the pheasants went on the wires and it just bang straight into the pheasant and that was the end of the pheasant and, and that is a picture we took while we were there and you can see the falcon there it's now opened its wings the feathers of the poor pheasant have gone to one side and then it takes the pheasant to the ground and that's its food and i looked at that and i thought isn't god absolutely wonderful because you can see it there you see the beak it's now got a piece of uh, meat in it in its beak and you can see its claws there that are there for holding the meat and i looked at all that and i saw the way that that went together and i thought isn't god absolutely wonderful isn't the design that god put into place absolutely wonderful so so we look at so we look at these things that's another falcon a, di a different falcon and we see we see the beak that does perfectly what it's meant to do we see the eyes perfectly positioned to see its prey the wings the feathers the claws we see all those things and i saw all those things and i thought isn't nature amazing what a wonderful design isn't god absolutely amazing the way he's designed together now this picture might take a little bit of explaining but i'll, I'll try and explain what's going on in this picture so that is a hawk upside down um, that's the lad um can't remember his name but he was flying the hawk off a lure and, and this is the lure and what you do is at the end of the lure there's a piece of meat or something which the hawk wants and you swing it round your head like that and somebody launches the hawk and the hawk comes towards you and as you're swinging it around you try and fool the hawk by making putting it in different directions and and the precision at which the hawk flies is or the falcon is absolutely phenomenal you could feel it as you're swinging it it could it was coming past us and it was just touching us with with the edge of its wings as it went past us it, it, it's it's the precision at which it flew was absolutely amazing and at this point the little lad he was just trying to confuse it he was going like this and then he threw it up in the air and in an instant the hawk that was coming at falcon rather that came in like that just went like that inverted went upside down and smack hit the lure bang in midair and i saw all that and thought isn't design isn't that a wonderful design i never thought oh that's a chance that's a coincidence that it's able to work like that i saw that all and thought isn't that absolutely fantastic so here's the design here's something that functions perfectly together that does everything that it's meant to so where's the designer where's the creator where's the person that put this wonderful design together you see nature screams design the world that we live in screams design when you look at the world and you see those things functioning together it says design it never never says chance you see things working perfectly together and you see a design you see a plan you see a purpose you see something that somebody came up with and said that'll work together <clears throat> and every one of those things that are birds that i show you i have personally witnessed i haven't shown you anything that i haven't personally witnessed and what i've seen and i could have shown you many many more po pictures of things i've seen over the years what i saw it was truly amazing and when I looked at those birds and those animals, I saw a design. I saw something that had purpose behind it. I saw something that was created to do exactly what it did. Something that functioned together. I never once saw a chance. In God's word, the Bible, God sets down a challenge. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Is it by your understanding, this is God talking to Job, that the hawk soars and spreads its wings towards the south is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high in other words god is saying to job did you create the hawk did you create the eagle did you put together the things that the world did you make these things happen and the answer is obviously no job didn't do those things because god is saying to job i did those things 
I put together the world, I created the world, I designed the world, the hawk, the, the eagle and all the other animals and nature. I created all that, says God. See, the simple truth is that God's fingerprints are everywhere in the world that we live in. God's fingerprints are all over the world we live in and all we have to do is look for them. Another uh, design, but one of a slightly different type. God's Word, the Bible. Over one million words. 66 books, 40 or so authors, written over hundreds, if not thousands of years, yet it has one consistent message. It, ha it, it, it fits together perfectly. It never contradicts itself. It lays out God's plan and purpose from the beginning to the end. It has stood the test of time over thousands of years. And you can see from the, the, the marking and the notes that I've put in there, you see I've, I've marked where it, it, it links together. And you can see in that marking the precision and the accuracy of God's word. And so when we look at God's word, when we see the way that it works together, when we see that design, we are forced to ask the question, well, here's the design, where's the designer? When we look at God's word and we see all that, that's the obvious question, where's the designer? And it is, of course, God. You see, the simple truth is that God's design and God's fingerprints are everywhere they're all around the world that we live in and all we have to do is look for them and, and I am flabbergasted I, I really am flabbergasted I, I can't understand it when people look at the world that we live in when they look at nature when they look at creation and say it happened by chance it happened over a long period of time I, I, I spend my whole life in design and I know the difference between something that was designed and something that came across by chance. And I look at the world we live in and I see God's design. I see God's handiwork. I see something that God put together for you and I to see. So the simple truth is that God's design, God's fingerprints are everywhere. So what are we, what are you and I going to do about that? Thank you.